So for this last section, we're going to return to our floor plan where we want to create a mass um, for the full, full first floor and then use the floor plan to split the rooms. Um, you can also do this without a floor plan. Uh, I just like having something for reference as an underlayment. So to get started, I already have an outline. I created a line in Rhino around my uh, building. You don't have to do that. You can use the draw room command and draw, use the free form option to quickly draw your room. And because, so let's do that one more time. Draw room, use the free, free form. And it's drawing it a little bit lower than the rest of my building. And that's because we have a, um, the Z plane dictates the ground surface. So because my floor plan is actually a foot and a half higher, sorry, a meter and a half higher, then my building, it's drawing the floor plan so that the ground plane is at zero, zero. But if I lift my building up by using the move command, by typing in M enter or move enter, I can pick an endpoint, and I'll, because we're in perspective, you want to snap to an orthogonal uh, endpoint and hit tab to make sure it locks. And then you can snap to any point in the CAD drawing to align, to bring that building up. You can also use the gumball if you know the dimension that you want to move it. So say you knew you were moving it like two meters. You can use the gumball by clicking on the arrow and typing in. Um, it was easier to use the move command. So if you have a massing that you're starting with, then we can start splitting this into its components. So I'm going to turn my color by face type off. And I'm going to type in PO split room. There's a bunch of options for splitting a room. First, you select the room. And if you have some geometry that you've already drawn in Rhino, you can select that as a cutter. If not, you can draw your own. Um, and the draw is a little deceiving because you're not going to be drawing it. You're going to be simulating it, and it will disappear once the room has been cut. So let's start with a draw cutter, and I'm going to use the vertical plane. And it's very simple. I'll just pick a corner endpoint. And I'll hit tab because I want to make sure it's orthogonal and I'll just find another endpoint. So then and click on it. And that created two rooms. If we go back to our colored view, we can see there's room one and room two. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So on this side, and you can see there's no geometry that's actually created by that vertical plane. So if I want to go ahead and hit, type in split room again, I'll select the room on this side now, and I'm going to go ahead and draw. And this time I'll use the three point, which is very similar to um, the vertical plane. But this is useful when you don't have orthogonal lines or you need to um, move in, do diagonal splits. So you can... As you can see, you can go in a couple of different directions. And so that just created a third room. Now with these smaller rooms in here, there's a couple of things you can do. You can choose to um, split it multiple times and then merge rooms. Or you can go into Rhino and you can create some geometry that you use as the cutting plane. So if we click on the surface here, and then we can find vertical plane, or you can type in vertical, sorry, it's plane, and choose vertical. And so actually that's not quite vertical. And so we'll draw it in Rhino. So this is going to be native Rhino geometry. And I'll draw another one along here. Mm. 
Make sure you're using the vertical plane. And now I have something to split. So if I go back here, you can see here's my rhino geometry and this is my pollination room. So let's go back to PO split room and select the room. And now I can select my cutter and that just created a fourth room. So I can delete this poly surface and now you can see I have a room here, a room here that is not um, a rectilinear space, but actually an L-shaped room.